is the Air Force stonewalling the task force slash arrow uh, slash whatever it is now? That's sure what it looks like. It looks like the cover up that the Air Force has been perpetuating all these years is still in full force uh, in the modern era, even with the new uh, programs uh, that had been signed into law by Congress. Okay, this is an important story. Get in here. This is Cosmic Road, where I discuss UFOs and the paranormal. Uh, the paranormal. Uh, <laughs> please hit like, please subscribe, share in social media, and comment below as I'm going through the story. There's also a uh, new feature, a super thanks. If you wanted to leave a tip in the tip jar, that'd be super appreciated. Uh, it would help me build this channel out. There is also uh, two membership tiers if you wanted to become a member of the channel trying to get things like better lighting and better equipment and allow me to spend more time on this channel in general. So if you wanted to become a member, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, on with the story. United States Air Force confirms its UFO pilot program was not extended as sources claim the military branch reprimanded officer for reaching out to the task force. Not cool, guys. Uh, the U.S. Department of Defense has confirmed to Liberation Times that the United States Air Force did not extend its Unidentified Aerospace Undersea Phenomenon Pilot Program. Furthermore, the DOD has refused to directly address allegations that USAF personnel were warned against participating with the task force and in another instance interrogated by the Department of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations a lot of people think that is the real men in black, uh, for participating in a classified DOD chat room devoted to UAP issues. Liberation Times has also learned new information about attempts by the Air Force to crack down on officers attempting to cooperate with the task force and that the Air Force was actually willing to participate on the topic before executing an 180 degree turn. So something made them change their mind. What was that? Uh, in June 2021, the UAP preliminary assessment released by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, including information regarding a USAF UAP pilot program, the report stated, although USAF data collection has been limited historically, <clears throat> has been limited historically, uh, the Air Force began a six-month pilot program in November 2020 to collect the most likely areas to encounter UAP and is evaluating how to normalize future collection reporting and analysis across the entire Air Force. Uh, let's see, in a response coordinated with the USAF DOD spokesman Susan Go provided information regarding the status and conclusions of the pilot program. Go confirmed that the program was not extended, stating the Air Force pilot program mentioned in the preliminary report to Congress ended in the spring of 2021. Lessons learned from the pilot were used to improve support provided to the UAPTF and will be used to contribute to the efforts of Aero. If applicable, data gathered in the pilot uh, was reported through command channels to the uh, task force. Despite an apparent willingness to work with the task force and its successor, the All-Domain All Anomaly Resolution Office, Aero, and it's going to be called something else now, a DOD source has made new claims on attempts by the Air Force to undermine investigation efforts. The source who also told Liberation Times that the Air Force was willing to participate with the task force be before making a U-turn commented, in one instance, while the task force was still the primary UAP interface for DOD, a mid-grade Air Force officer was reprimanded and admonished by their chain of command for reaching out to task force members. It seemed the Air Force was willing to participate one day, and the next it executed a complete 180-degree turn. Have Air Force efforts to undermine investigations backfired? Writing for the debrief earlier this year, Chris Mellon, a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, suggested that the Air Force was threatening its personnel for cooperating and participating in UAP investigation 
efforts. According to Mellon, USAF oversight committees were advised last year that the Air Force warned its personnel not to approach the task force without prior approval and that individuals participating in a classified DOD chat room devoted to UAP issues were subsequently interrogated by USAF OSI, OSI staff who warned them against further participation. When asked for comment, Go on behalf of the Air Force said, we are not going to comment on alleged conversations with congressional oversight committees or in classified DOD fora, uh, nor on alleged investigations by AFOSI. We can tell you it is not normal practice within military units to provide information on the proper chain of command for reporting within the unit and to support required congressional uh, notifications. In response, the DOD source argued that the chain of command is broken, hence the new push via legislation encouraging whistleblowers to speak out. The source said, when the chain of command is broken, what does one do? The answer is whistleblower legislation. That'd be nice. Uh, Liberation Times understands that multiple whistleblowers are now ready to speak with Congress and that their claims go beyond UAP sightings and incidents, but instead relate to retrieval and reverse engineering programs involving craft potentially from non-human intelligence. Furthermore, once the National Defense Authorization Act is signed into law, further hearings are expected to follow. It is uncertain whether those hearings would involve whistleblowers directly connected with such programs. And the article goes on, but that's the gist of it. Basically, the Air Force, uh, you know, like I said, one minute it was cooperating and the next it wasn't. Did they receive a directive from above uh, that they should uh, stymie the efforts of the task force? It certainly fits a pattern of the Air Force not being cooperative on this issue. Uh, and, you know, why would they, uh, since uh, the uh, control group seems to be uh, either within the Air Force or uh, firmly tied to the Air Force? The Air Force is deeply involved in the phenomenon. Area 51, Wright-Patterson, they've been in this for a long, long time. Uh, so, you know, whatever is going on, whatever the government's involvement with the phenomenon, wherever the control group is located, you know, the breakaway group, whatever you want to call them, they are either within the Air Force or they have very solid ties to the Air Force. Uh, so it's no surprise to me that they would stymie uh, the task force slash arrow slash whatever it is now. Uh, so, you know, this, this is just all part and par partial of what they have been doing low these many years. How can that change? Uh, does Congress have the ability to compel them to cooperate? Well, I guess we're going to see very shortly. Uh, we do know that Admiral Wilson tried to muscle in on the control group and he was stymied. Uh, so, you know, they did give him some details, but not many, and they downplayed the phenomenon in general and even denied such things as, you know, alien abductions. They also said that it was mostly in the private sector these days. However, they still had enough juice within the Pentagon to threaten his career. Is that the same control group that is associated with Area 51 and other places? It's hard to say. I would assume so, however. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think the Air Force will ever cooperate or can ever be made to cooperate? If the breakaway group is indeed within the Air Force or firmly rooted to the Air Force, that seems very unlikely to me. Unless some power greater than the breakaway group can uh, make that happen. And I, I, I don't know what that would be. Congress? Maybe. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That'd be awesome. And smash that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. Follow me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I'd love to interact with you on social media and for you to share these videos when they drop on Facebook and Twitter. That would be enormously helpful. There's also a new membership feature where you can become a member of the channel and actually support the channel for ongoing efforts to get better lighting, 
and better equipment and uh, better quality videos in general. Uh, for me to be able to spend more time on this channel, that would be greatly appreciated. The same result could be had for leaving a tip in the tip jar with the super thanks feature below. Until next time, this is Jack from Cosmic Road signing out.